began to walk with him and share with him. So what is the principle? What is the principle? Who has the mic? Oh, it's God's blueprint. Uh, observed in the nat uh, natural world. Revealed in the Bible. So, the, from this answer, we see that there are two ways we can observe the principle or get to know the principle. Through what? The natural world and through what? The, the scriptures. The natural world and the scriptures. <clears throat> Bible is not limited to the Judeo-Christian Bible. I like the word scriptures. The Bhagavad Gita. The Quran. DP. And lately, Chan Siong Young. These are scriptures. These are words. These are, these are divinely inspired words that the divine principle collects all together. So, um, in this in future lectures, you will see the scriptures, not just the Bible, because the Bible itself is a compilation of many scriptures from different places. So, continue reading. To live well, we must know our purpose. And our purpose is determined by our designer, who is God. To know our purpose, we must know God. The laws of our nature support the person who knows God. The laws of nature supports who? Echo it, brothers and sisters. Some of us are too silent. The laws of nature support what? Who knows God? So what is the first thing I need to do? I need to know God. I need to know about God. Number one, fully well. Because if I want, if I want full support, now if I want partial support, yeah, I should just know God partially. You know, this only this area, God. But if I want full support, full, full anointing, eh? if I want to be, if I want to be a true person, like like how God created me, I really need to know everything about my father, about my mother, my heavenly parent, God. Are you? I need to know the designer, who is God. Continue. Because of sin, often good people suffer an evil mm. tri Tri triumphs. Uh, we need to know the entire principle. That we, we need to know some? Oh. Entire. Amazing. Entire. Looks like a lifetime work. A joyful lifetime vocation. Continue. The original model of life with God principle of creation, the origin of sin, human form, and the path of release from sin, the mission of the Messiah and principle of restoration. So, thank you so much. Let's show our love to our great brother, Tanakuni. Tanakuni is a, a, a supervisor in a cleaning company. And I'm so grateful for him driving up his brother and his cousin up today. We thank God for you and for reading. How can we then perceive God? If this is the number one question, if, I, if I'm to know my full self, I need to know my maker, my creator, the designer. Uh, if my computer breaks down, uh, if it's from, from Microsoft, it's good, I take it back to Microsoft because Microsoft designed it and they can fix it, right, better than any other person. Yeah, you can find some other side person who knows something, but if you really want it fixed, right, if it's a Samsung phone, you take it back to the Samsung people, they will fix it better than if you take it to just some roadside somebody. So I really want to know God. I want to know God. How can I perceive God? You no, know, we talk about perception, right? We talk about perception. Somebody be my timekeeper. If it's up to 40 minutes, we have to stop. Regardless of where I am for this first lecture. So I, I want to I want to know all of God. And so we see in the Bible it says one way, one way is the way the apostle Paul wrote that we can perceive God through again creation. Father tells us the blueprint, creation. We see that an artist, one way to know um, 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 about an artist's work, 
an artist's work is to look at the works. There's, there's no, 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 um, no, what for Picasso around here. You know, once you see a Picasso drawing, you know it's Picasso. There's just something about it. So, in the same way, Romans tells us that God is self-evident. If you just really think about it, hmm. is that brother David? What's your name, David? What's your name, sir? I forget your name, your name, brother. Uh, Ivan. 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 <coughs> Ivan, yes, I remember you. Thank you for coming. Um, self-evident. God is, is, there's a self-evidence of life. One way, one way at least I have come to realize. I just have to think, did I, did I somehow, why don't I have a knowledge of how I created myself? You know, if I'm this so-called self-contained and I'm so full of myself, how come I don't know from where I come from? How come, how come none of you, none of us, maybe Saiba knows where she come from? You do? She's aside. No, I don't. So, but in a way, I am alive. I am alive and something prompts me. And so in Romans, we look at, in, when you see that question is asked in Romans, that there is no reason, no excuse for people to make in this world because once you come alive with your right mind, questions come. And with those questions, you find that you yourself cannot answer those questions by yourself. The number one question, did you sit with God? Did you sit with somebody anywhere that say, I want to appear, I want to appear through the spirits? Anybody here? Anybody designed themselves and, and, and say, okay, I want to be a man, I want to be a woman, and I'm, I'm gonna come through this, this set of couples? Nobody, nobody. But yet you are alive and somehow you get this consciousness of, of something is more. And Paul says, once you look around the universe, you look at nature, back again to nature, when you observe the natural world, you have to definitely come to a clear conclusion that there's a designer. The sun rises with a pattern. Everything has a pattern. Everything has a principle. Nothing is haphazard. It may look haphazard like this. It may look confusing. You go in the jungle, it looks confusing, but the more you dig into it, you find clarity. So, there is there is a composition. Before we go, I, I really want us to, uh, what time is it? Because I think it's speaking, it's 11.15. When did we start? When did we start? We started about 10, 30, 10, 20. Okay, so I'm just gonna go five minutes so that we can uh, those want to just stretch a little bit. So, the creation is trying to tell us something, um, young people, about the nature of God. When we look at creation, first of all, when we look at human beings, we see something. What do we see in human beings, Sister Saiba? How many types of human beings do we have? Two. And namely? Masculine. Men and women. Man and woman, masculine and feminine. This goes for all human beings. And within the human being, what other two clear components do we see? Mind and body. Mind and body. body. Or we observe. The mind, do you see the mind? No. But you can observe the mind by what the person do, what the person says. You can know somebody's mind by their action, their activity, even how they dress, how they behave, their attitude. So we find out that when we observe this, 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 um, this, this situation in, in nature, this, um, this duality, masculinity and femininity, internal nature and external form, mind and body in human beings, we also see that it is also in what? Speak up, guys. I don't want you to sleep. Animals. Animals. And animals, for now, science say they have an instinct. Kind of a mind, invisible. 
but they do have a body. They look different from my body, our body, but they do have a body. And then they, basically they have an internal nature and they have an external form. And they are both what? Male and female again. Let's go to the next one. Ty, Ty, what do you see? What does plants? The next one, is it different? Any different in the plants? Do we see the same duality? And in the plants, what do we call that duality? The masculine is called? Stamen. And the feminine? Pistol. So, all of creation, this does not even... It's in the molecules, the atoms, the invisible realm. Most of the things that control our computer passes through this realm. The molecules, the atoms, and the particles. Is there any different? They have the same dual characteristic. They have within them the same masculinity and femininity. Positive and negative. Not as in evil, but a positive charge and a negative charge. They have an inherent directive nature. They only do what they've been governed or, or designed by the maker, by God to do. They don't go astray. They don't change those atoms. Those, those small, they, they, are, they are so precise, so beautiful that they, 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 they have this inherent directive that they follow it clearly in their nature. And then mankind now, human beings can, we have um, a powerful telescope that has allowed us to even see the atom, the visible world, to observe energy in its form. So through creation, we see, we see that the duality is constant everywhere. And even in this room, we're going to break, even in this room, we see duality. Somebody tell me what's the duality happening here? What a young person. Teacher and student. Eh? Teacher and student. Teacher and student, speak up, speak up. I want you to say it loud. Speak to the mic, speak up. Say, say, tell us again, what's that? What's the answer? As a teacher and student. Like teacher and student. That duality. But are we, are we in conflict? No. No. So, if we don't have this now, that means we can be in conflict. If it's just a one way. This is the important thing I'm trying to say. Because I need to hear you. I need to hear you. We need to hear each other. Oh, for the body, I don't understand what you just said. Very important. I'll go back to it. So this is already in action. It goes precedent and nation, duality, everywhere. God and man, heaven and earth, left and right, up and down, front and back. <laughs> Nothing escapes that. And once you understand that principle, seriously, brothers and sisters, it is just that simple one we can free ourselves of to really get at, you become at the center of that, you know that you can attract and give and take with all directions. You can begin to inherit your true divine nature. You can begin to really inherit that central position of life that God wants to be put to all of us. God's true love, God's divinity that can interact with all areas of the spirit. And hence, you find no more duality. You find complementary, complements. Everything complementing each other. Everything moving as a whole, together. None left behind. But if there are only students here and no teacher, not right. If there are only teachers here and no students, dead world. If there are only men in the world and no women, somebody answer. Would life continue? <laughs> if there are all women and no men, any life? No. So we need each other, right? The left needs the right. The front needs the back. The top needs the bottom. So no one is more superior or powerful than anyone, than the one who realizes he or she is at the center of that attraction to make everything work well in harmony. He or she is that one who is inheriting that divine position 
as a true person of God and can become a true parent like our great father and mother moon who attract all directions and serve all directions into oneness not into separateness as a family amen amen, amen. amen. any question or comment from before we take a five minute break Feel free, feel free. At least one question, one comment. We don't want Pastor Party always questioning and answering. So the first principle of creation is the principle of duality. The first principle, exactly. The first principle of creation really is, is that principle of duality, complementary opposites, duality. And we, we look in the Bible, we can see that clearly, that when God, God created Mankind in his what? Image. Speak up. I like image. And likeness. And likeness. So when you look at that, just that statement alone tells us about duality. In his image and likeness. Internally and externally. Male and female. And come on, Saiba, finish that for me. In, in the in the story of creation, um, you remember how Eve came about? Give her the mic. People need to hear. She was taken from Adam's rib. Okay. So that means at one time within God, there was male and female. And he created Adam, right? And he saw that it wasn't good for Adam to just be by himself. So he went into Adam and brought out Eve. So the complementary opposite, and we'll get to that as we talk about resembling God through marriage. Uh, so yes, that's the first principle of, 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 of creation. It's the principle of duality, the, uh, understanding the first cause. Looking at that, we see that God has harmonious duality within God. Uh, not conflicting duality, but harmonious masculinity and femininity that re revolves in oneness. Any other comment? Any other question? Okay, let's take five, ten, some, 